Thank you for joining us today. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can. Okay. So um, thank you for joining um, the listing ceremony press conference for Aurelius Technologies for Hearts, um, which is listed on the uh, main market of Busa Malaysia today. So um, if you have any questions, please feel free to key in um, the chat room and then I'll just read it out, okay? So maybe we can start with Mr. Lee and Mr. Lo. So how do you feel today with um, the opening price? Uh, Mr. Lee? Mm. Oh, uh, we, we, we are happy with the opening market. You know, uh, I think, you know, the, the, the price started off well. So, you know, uh, we appreciate the uh, you know uh, supporters, you know, uh, the public supporters of the shares, and you know, and also all the institutional supporters of the shares. Uh, considering you know the market sentiment that is on now, I think you know we are doing very well. You know, so you know we we we, we are really glad with it. Thank you. The next question that I have is: um, Are you planning on uh, diversifying your business? And maybe share with us who you, who are your customers. So maybe you know, Mr. Lee and Mr. Lo can share the question. Uh, BCM as a company, you know, we have grown over the twenty eight years. We have started off, you know, in a very small scale, you know, and you know, we have grown to this stage in these twenty eight years. And uh, yes, you know, we will definitely not stop at this stage. Uh, the plan is, yes, we will continue to grow, we will continue to expand uh, many areas that we can look to in terms of expansion, in terms of growth. But our major focus on growth at this moment will be on the, uh, what we call the semiconductor uh, multi-component modules at the moment, because this is in the IoT space, and it is a very fast growing space uh, at the moment. But uh, now, having said that, you know, we are also looking into other areas that could uh, include uh, vertical integration or even might be, uh, you know, to a certain extent, uh, some downstream uh, uh, expansion. Thank you. So um, being the principal advisor for uh, Raymond, Mr. Raymond Choi, um, are you happy with the opening price for today? For ATAC. I believe um, with the uh, support given by the institution as well as the retail investors, uh, we've seen the price uh, perform well uh, after the opening of the, of the market. So, um, what's your views on the demand and challenges of IoT and EMS industry in the market? I think, uh, you know, uh, E&E &E industry as a whole <clears throat> is still uh, one of the key uh, economic of Malaysia. Uh, we see that, uh, you know, continue to grow. Uh, having said that, of course, uh, you know, there are certain challenges, you know, in, uh, in the current environment, uh, you know, uh, especially under this current uh, COVID situation. <clears throat> you know, we had that experience uh, for the past uh, two years. Uh, we are prepared, and I think we can live and uh, work in this COVID environment uh, much better uh, at, at this juncture. Uh, with us allowed to operate 100% uh, now, uh, since the uh, end of October, as our people are fully vaccinated, uh, we see a very strong demand uh, worldwide for E&E &E, uh, industry, uh, for our customer as well. Uh, you know, with this uh, IPO, uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> we were in a better uh, position, you know, to further grow our business as uh, soon as we can. Um, the shortages, you know, of the you know semiconductor component that you can see in the market uh, is largely due to you know the higher demand or more demand for this for this electronic product. Okay, I think COVID uh, has changed the way we work and also changed the way we learn. Uh, you know, more things are relying on electronics, you know, so that we can work from home, work from anywhere we want, uh, we are. With that, I think uh, we are particularly, uh, you know, excited about the uh, few of IoT and IoT related type of product. Uh, 
So going forward, you know, as Mr. Lee mentioned, uh, those areas of, of IoT module and IoT product uh, will be you know, our focus on moving forward. Thank you. So can you name some of your customers and are they mainly local or foreign? Can we mention customers? Okay, um, you know, due to the sensitivity of the business that we are with our customer, uh, you know, uh, we would request to, you know, not to name them, uh, but most of our customer, our top five customer, uh, they are multinational company, uh, have uh, operations uh, around the world. And uh, more importantly, uh, we have been with them uh, for a long time. Okay? Some customer has been with us since our inception. Uh, important to, to also note here is that, you know, um, all the customer that has, have been working with us since day one, uh, they have not, uh, none of them have left us before. Mm -hmm. So um, my next question is, um, EMS players in Malaysia are facing allegations of a forced labor issue. So are you facing the same issue? Are you dependent on foreign labor? So what's your views? No, we are not facing that issue because currently we are 100% uh, local uh, uh, workers. And then for um, Maybank, for Raymond, so how do you see the EMS industry moving forward? What is the prospect for um, of ATAC? I think it's man mentioned by management. Um, so in terms of their customer base and the, the group, uh, that appears to be strong. Um, I think um, ATAC will uh, benefit from, from And um, can you elaborate what is ATEX plan on ESG and strategy? Okay, I think uh, ESG is, uh, you know, uh, something that uh, the company take it very uh, seriously. Uh, from the day we start operation, you know, we are fully compliant to, you know, ISO 14,000, uh, which is environmental. Uh, at the same time, also, we are fully compliant to health and safety of our people, okay? Uh, we are also uh, RBA uh, compliant, RBA stands for reliant, uh, reliant, reliant okay, sorry, Responsibility Business Alliance. So in that RBA, uh, there are also elements of ESG. So we are not only, you know, to treat all our workers fairly, uh, we also have to, you know, provide an environment which is safe, you know, for all our workers, okay? So governance is also, you know, uh, one of the area that uh, uh, we, we are very, uh, uh, what I call, uh, <clears throat> what an area that, you know, we, we take it very seriously, okay? Uh, you, can mention, you can hear from our uh, speech from a chair, chairperson, uh, she's particularly, uh, very well was in this area of governance. She's in the pioneer of, uh, uh, you know, in, in Malaysia setting up a standard for governance, uh, especially for the listed company. Okay. So going forward, I think, yes, definitely. ESG is one of the very important, uh, <clears throat> important segment that we will be, you know, continuing to comply. And, uh, you know, if not, we, if, if not exceeded compliance. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, our next question is, you guys talked about the upskilling your local workforce and even attracting more locals to work. So how will that happen? We are actually uh, uh, continuously uh, reviewing our salary scale, uh, looking into uh, you know, uh, other you know, uh, benefits that we can uh, provide for them. And at the same time, uh, you know, we will we are continuing to uh, create a more conducive uh, working environment uh, for them. Uh, in many sense, as our company, you know, we try to create a security, a sense of security for our for our uh, operators, our employees, uh, and this is uh, indicated by the sense that you know, over the many years of ups and downs in the economy, and you know, and everything else, uh, you know, we have not. Uh, you know, uh, retrench any or, you know, uh, 
uh, sack any uh, you know, of any of our employees. You know, uh, that has created a sense of security for them. And I think, you know, when they come in, they realize that, you know, and this is part of what, how we do attract, uh, you know, uh, employees to stay with us. And most of our employees are with us for a very long term. Thank you. That's nice. So next question is, since the U.S. is clamping down on Chinese chip maker, maker so do you see that this will benefit ATAC as well as other chip maker in Malaysia? Uh, we, we think, you know, there should be some benefit for Malaysia. You know, uh, we don't see a direct benefit uh, in that sense, but we do see indirect benefit in the sense that uh, foreign companies, U.S. companies that uh, work uh, or do their jobs in the U.S. Uh, gradually, you know, moving over, you know, to look for, you know, uh, EMS in Malaysia. So in that sense, uh, you know, we do benefit, you know, from that area, from that angle of it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So um, do we have any more questions from the floor? I think I only have like one or two more. Yeah, I think the, the other one is on operations. So can you break down how much each of your top five customers contribute to the company's revenue? Uh, yeah, <clears throat> our top five customer uh, collectively contributing, uh, you know, close to 90% of our total revenue. You know, for the latest financial period ended 31st August 2021. Uh, customer A contributing contributed, you know, close to 30%. Uh, con customer B contributed about 20. Customer C uh, contributed around 24. Customer D uh, is about 10. And customer E about 5. So you put these five customers together, uh, their contribution is about 90% of our total. So is your current um, capacity enough to take on new jobs? Yeah, our current capacity as we have now, you know, we are, operated it, uh, we are operating at about, you know, close to 94, 95%. Uh, as you're aware, our expansion for our factory is com completing by end of this year. Uh, that will give us uh, additional uh, around 70% additional of the production floor. Uh, at the same time also, you know, we have a plan, you know, on our CAPEC. Uh, we are ready uh, by beginning of next year uh, to, you know, <clears throat> to roll out our, you know, expansion program when our factory space is ready. We have one last question. Uh, this one, if it's um, sensitive, then we don't have to share it. So I wonder if ATAC might share its um, hedging strategy seeing the weak ringgit is favorable. Okay, uh, I mean, to us, we, do, we never hedge our you know, currency position. Uh, the reason for that is uh, we are pretty much naturally hedge. Uh, most of our revenue are in US dollars. Uh, at the same token, uh, you know, uh, most of our purchases are also in U.S. dollars. Okay, so our exposure as to U.S. dollar dollar is not uh, no, not very great. You know, uh, so we don't we don't uh, see any impact. You know that we have on the foreign currency exchange. If there is any, I think they are very minimal. Uh, so we don't have the hedging plan in place. Thank you very much. I think that will be all for today. Thank you, Raymond. Thank you, Mr. Lee, Mr. Law, for the press conference. Um, members of the media, if you have any more questions, please feel free to email us at any time or call us. Uh, we are here. And the press, uh, press kit link has been um, sent in the chat room, so you can just download press releases, speech, um, pictures, are uh, all in there too, yeah? All right, thank you very much. Have a good day. Congratulations again. Thank you, Stephanie, and thank you, thank you. The, to all the media. Thank you.